A ton of snow is set to fall as winter kicks into high gear and the models continue to struggle with the cold and the long range. Welcome into the channel, everyone. Jason is my name and tracking weather for a long time, and I'm glad you're here with me. Happy Thanksgiving. Hope you are having a wonderful day so far. Got some interesting things to show you. This will be a short show, but I want to cover the snow that's coming and take a look at the pattern and see who is most favored to get snow as we work into December. And that snow track will start to shift south and east through the month, but we're going to take a look at uh, where the snow is set to fall right now. We're going to start here by taking a look at the satellite image, and you can actually see that satellite image right here and a lot of cloud cover out there. Got another storm system working into the west. When has that not been the case? A lot of rain and snow falling up here that will continue and snow in the higher elevations as we go in the next several days through the weekend. And out here in the plains, a lot of cloud cover here too. A lot of low clouds coming in out of Canada, some high clouds working through the Tennessee Valley and a storm system that brought all that snow into the Midwest and Great Lakes is still bringing lake effect snow and that'll continue, but it is pushing up into Canada and then leftover frontal boundary stretching across parts of the Southeast, the Eastern sections of it anyway in Florida. That's what's going on there. Now take a look here. This is our MJO plot. We continue to see the MJO forecast to get into phase eight. We're right here right now. See, we're still way up here in phase six. So it's not surprising for some areas of the country to be warm. However, we're a little bit cooler than what phase six normally would show, but we're expected to go into phase seven, which would center the core of the cold anomalies as we've looked at many times on this channel over the Northern Plains and then cool air filters into the southern plains and bleeds east as we get on through phase seven in toward phase eight. And that's when much of the central and eastern portion of the country would experience the coldest anomalies, phase eight, one, and even potentially two as we go on in toward the end of December and get into January. That's way out in time, but all forecasts continue to show the uh, maybe a little loop-de-loop -loop here in phase seven. We get into phase eight through December. That would be good. Put us in cool weather and time for the holidays and sort of ensure, can't really ensure a cold pattern. There's other things at play too, but I sort of lean heavily on the MJO uh, when other factors aren't so uh, overwhelming, so to speak. So uh, my expectation is we'll continue to cool through the month of December. Strat warming, boy, that continues to show up here. Let's do this. Let's make it this way and we'll go to weather bell and that way we can see this because we're going to go show you some weather bell maps here in a second. Strat warm here. We're down here at zero. Boy, it comes up quick. Uh, then we get a secondary warming down toward the end of December. And uh, depending on how strong that is, that could disrupt the vortex as we head on into January and February. So some hope down the road that our our polar vortex way up in the stratosphere doesn't reconsolidate and get super strong and it's supposed to stay according to the European weekly forecast here below normal this is the sort of average strength of the polar vortex this big thick red line and this blue line is the uh, weekly mean as we go on out toward it takes us into early January now still weaker than normal which is a good thing any sort of other disruptions that we get to it we'll see those uh, continue to up uh, it'll, it'll continue to affect the pattern and potentially uh, allow more cold weather into the United States. If you're a cold weather fan, if you're not a cold weather fan, you want to see a really strong wound up polar vortex coupled tightly with the troposphere, keeping the jet stream bottled up and all the cold air bottled up too. I'm rooting against that scenario, of course, as you know from watching this channel here. But uh, here we go. We're starting out. Look at this big EPO block. This is the European Ensemble mean. And I'll show you a couple things here. Uh, my pen went away again, as usual. It always does this and now I can't use it probably yeah it's not gonna let me work but I'll just have to draw here uh, look at that big ridge this EPO ridge is poking way up into the Arctic it's sending air right down out of Canada straight down into the United States and so we get this big response this blue anomaly now if this ridge is way over to uh, the Aleutians, it's going to send the cooler uh, weather down in here into the western portion of the country but the way it's set up now this is kind of favored now, this is ideal for an eastern U.S. cold, and you can see that blue anomaly there. Those are lower heights in the mid-levels, as we talk about here on this channel. And then the uh, reds are higher heights, usually warmer under those and cooler under the blues and the greens. And as we go on out through the weekend, another little cool punch comes in associated with a storm system that's going to drop a lot of snow here in the Midwest and in the, in the uh, Central Plains again into the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes. Once again, a lot of the same areas that saw snow. A little farther south is where we'll see the main snow axis center this time though but uh, you'll pick up some more snow more lake effect behind that and that ridge continues to sit off the coast it retrogrades back into the gulf which is not ideal and you can see that uh, is also a little bit of a lower latitude too 
and it keeps uh, it keeps uh, the uh, cool weather centered more up in Canada, but we still get a flow out of the Northwest through much of the United States, a little bit of ridging poking into the West. And so we'll stay cooler than normal here in the central portion of the country. That looks more like phase seven to me, which is, you know, about where we are. We're getting into that phase uh, as we move on in toward December. And then as we go on out again, no sign of the Southeast Ridge anytime soon. Remember how the other day all of these uh, bright yellow colors were poking into the south and to the east and warming us up? Well, now that's been replaced by a big uh, vortex up here in Canada, and that will just persist. And we even start to see some hints of blocking these these uh, yellow colors and oranges coming back in over Greenland. That's what you want to see out in time. That's associated with phase eight. So as we get on in toward phase eight, I bet you'll see the signal increase. Correct me if I'm wrong on that when we get at uh, time, but that's my prediction. I think that's what we're going to see in any event uh, that'll help push this cold air even farther south. The storm track comes south, and that's what I'm expecting as we go on into December and head toward the holidays. We'll have some real legitimate winter storm chances because look at this pattern. This pattern is active, and you can kind of tell that when you have a low anomaly here off the uh, southwest coast, and it's just uh, little pieces of energy are kind of flowing along in the southern branch here, and they're helping to create storm systems as, as uh, the, they move along into the United States. And then we get way on here to the end of the run. This is two weeks out, puts us in uh, to, to toward mid, the early part of mid-December, and then it wants to bring the Southeast Ridge back. I bet you will see this poke in and out for a little bit, but predominantly it's going to stay squashed to the south. Now, taking a look at the more immediate uh, concerns here. We've got winter storm watches and some uh, winter weather advisories, even the pinks are winter storm warnings, and you see those continuing in uh, Montana up here and also into the uh, Michigan area, UP of Michigan, where a blizzard warning is still in effect around the Marquette area. Very, very heavy snow continues to fall here. Lake effect snow warnings in the lee of Lake Erie and Ontario, and we're going to see heavy snow there as well. Wind blown snow up here in the Great Lakes too, and winter storm watches are up for parts of Iowa, Minnesota, back in to uh, the eastern sections of Nebraska, South Dakota, and then the Chicagoland area. A lot of uh, winter storm watches in your area. Looking for a lot of snow coming down here over the next uh, several days. Look at this. As a matter of fact, if we take a look at the expected snowfall nationally, you can see those lake effect snows really kicking into gear. Also got a little bit of snow up here in, across the border uh, counties of uh, Washington and I Idaho and Montana too. Look at that, just as we're going out into tomorrow morning through tomorrow morning, we're already picking up close to a foot, even in some cases two feet of snow up here in the lake effect snow zones and parts of the UP of Michigan still associated with that synoptic low pressure system. And then as we go on out Friday uh, through the day on Friday, more snow is continuing to fall and you start to see another storm system getting its act together in the plains, bringing more snow and it will really explode over Iowa, Chicago, Southern Wisconsin, Back into Michigan, northern Indiana, looking at South Bend, maybe Gary up here looking at getting in on some good snow, talking about 6 to 12, even as much as 18 inches of snow in some of these areas if things come together just right. So really looking at that picking up through the day on uh, Saturday, Saturday night into early Sunday, and also seeing some snow back up into the high country in Montana, even getting out into the prairies as well. Two or three inches of snow out there, maybe four or five if you're lucky, not out of the question. And that's what, as we've gone out farther in time, you just sort of see that snow pile up and continue to pile up. And you can kind of see where the main areas of snow are going to be focused over the next probably week, maybe even two. There are some signals that we'll see a southeast storm get its act together and then have enough cold air as it moves into the Piedmont of the Carolinas. And I'll show you that in here in a second. You already saw an animation of that running on the GFS earlier. But uh, some cold air working in on the northern side of that to give some potential foothills action quickly here in the northern sections of North Carolina up into Virginia, uh, potentially a little bit of ice mixed with some snow, and then uh, back into the interior sections of the northeast. That's where you're going to be favored. Taking a look at some of these individual snow maps, check this out. This is out of Des Moines, Iowa, in Fort Dodge, Waterloo, Marshalltown, Cedar Rapids, Dubuque. Look at that, uh, 10 to as much as 16 inches. This is the expected snowfall, and of course around that you've got a big area of 8 to 12 uh, and then back in here is six to maybe six to ten, and then as you get into the blue areas, it's more in the way of one to six. You're gonna have a pretty sharp cutoff when you get start to get down here out of this yellow zone down to the south and east, but that is something else, man. You guys are going to be shoveling snow through the weekend. This is the worst case scenario. You can see up to 20 inches in a lot of those places and then a big area over a foot. That's the worst case scenario, sort of the low end amount. 
you know, if things just fall apart, could still see six to 10 inches in here in the zone where we saw a foot or more earlier. So looks like all systems go for a big snow. And as we take a look at Chicago, here's the expected range. Everybody getting eight to 10 inches of snow, maybe close to a foot back here to the west. Uh, and then to the east of the lakes, of course, and then down to the south uh, toward, uh, I'm not sure how you say that, Rin Rinsler, Rinslayer, I don't know, uh, Lafayette, I know how to say that, Paxton, that's easy, Knox, it's easy too, I'm not sure how do you say this, if anybody's up here in this area, correct me, let me know how do you say that, there's Valparaiso, I can say that, I've watched their basketball team a lot, but there you go, folks, that is the expected snow, high end, look at that, Chicago could pick up 18 to 20 inches of snow if things came together and this storm just exploded, took exactly the right track. Again, that's not the expected amount. I just wanted to show that because there is uh, a high-end scenario on the table, about a 10% chance, and then a 10% chance of the low-end scenario playing out too. Look at that, six inches in Chicago. You're still getting a good snow, but it looks like a good snow by all accounts. There's the kind of expected snow again, but that is a good, good early season snowfall for the Chicagoland area and parts of Indiana as well. So enjoy it if you're a big winter weather fan. That'll happen this weekend as we go through the next couple of days. As a matter of fact, we'll take a look here, sort of run this map out. There's where we are kind of currently. We're going to come in here and take a look at the next 24 hours. So if we get on in here and look at uh, tomorrow morning, boy, it is a nice day with high pressure in control. But through the afternoon, we're going to start to see snow. Pick, well, I'm sorry, this is, uh, this is Friday afternoon. So this Friday afternoon, you're going to have a nice day, a lot of lake effect snow. But as we get on into Friday night, and approach uh, the overnight hours on uh, early Saturday morning. Look at this snow breaking out in Iowa up into the southern sections of Minnesota, of course, back up into the Dakotas as well, and Wyoming. And it really gets in, kicks into high gear as this low starts to strengthen down here in the southern plains. We move along through the day and get into Saturday evening. Snow is ongoing. Iowa back into Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan and uh, on into Indiana too. And just depending on the track of this storm will matter where the rain snow line sets up. Of course, it's going to turn your, uh, at least in Southern Indiana and Southern uh, Iowa, it's not Iowa, it's Ohio. Southern Ohio, as some of you people say, up in the north, Ohio, you will see the rain change to snow in the south. And just depending on the exact track the storm takes, it could bring some mixing in, uh, in and around Chicago and southern Michigan, too. If it stays just a little bit south of there, you guys will stay all snow. It's a little bit too soon to tell that. Some of the models kind of take it a little bit farther north. The GFS keeps it, I think, a little bit farther south. So this is the Euro. And then it shows it uh, moving on in through the Great Lakes. Rain will push into the northeast as we head into to the uh, day on Sunday, and that'll start to clear out through the evening hours overnight, Sunday into Monday. Of course, Sunday could be kind of a little bit of a rainy day here in the southeast, and that will clear as a big, cold, high pressure once again follows that storm system, and another storm system begins to get its act together. As we take a look at high and low temperatures over the next couple of, couple of days, we looked at this yesterday, and not a lot has changed. Below freezing up here in the northern plains today with 30s underneath that through the Ohio Valley and then the south and to the east. Boy, that ridge is getting squashed down. We're looking at highs in the 50s here in the coastal plain of North Carolina back to the 40s as we head toward the mountains. 50s across the southeast. You get way down here in the southern tier, 60s, 70s, and 80s, the southern portion of Florida. Overnight lows tonight. Single digits. I said it right this time up here in the northern plains. A lot of snow up here, so it's going to really refrigerate those temperatures. And then as we go on through the evening hours, look for teens and 20s through much of the Ohio Valley. 20s and below freezing uh, uh, Figures can be found all the way into the deep south. And look at that. So it's going to get cold tonight. High temperatures tomorrow is going to feel like a winter day with 40s across much of the east and southeast, at least in the upper sections of the southeast. And then we get into 50s and 60s below that, but still highs in the 20s across the uh, northern tier tomorrow. And then tomorrow night, as you wake up Sunday morning, or this is this will be Saturday morning, sorry. Uh, again, single digits, some below zeros up here in Montana possible. And then uh, Saturday morning, look at these lows, 20s extending all the way down into the upper sections of the southeast and the interior sections as well. Still got a little bit of a warm punch ahead of this storm system coming in as southwesterly winds will flow in and uh, warm you guys up here in the southern plains. And then as we get on into Sunday, we're looking at, or this 
I'm a, I'm a day ahead of myself. This is Saturday, 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 as you can clearly see right there. Saturday highs, looking at uh, highs in and below freezing uh, for a good portion of the real estate across the north and then warm across the south. Still in the 40s for parts of the east and southeast in the Tennessee Valley too. So boy, oh boy, it's going to be chilly, chilly, chilly over the next several days. Six to 10 day outlook, very cold up here in the Great Lakes in the northeast, getting a little less so as you head toward the south and southeast and of course warmer than normal out west. And you would sort of expect that when you've got a big cold anomaly sitting here in the Great Lakes Northeast area and then warm in Florida. You guys are not seeing a big break from the heat at all down there. The ridge is still, that southeast ridge is still poking in. And then as we look at the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook, still got cold. Uh, it's going to be colder than normal across the north and into the Great Lakes with a little bit more of a normal signal as you head farther to the south and to the west, but it looks like a good portion of the west and south will start to warm up as we get on out in time. And models continue to show cold shots just kind of coming in and grazing across the northern tier. So kind of putting a bow on the whole entire forecast. Look for the biggest amounts of snow to be really centered from Idaho all the way through the Ohio Valley and the interior sections of the northeast. Depending on how a couple of these systems evolve over the next several days, or the next, uh, you know, maybe a week or two, you're going to see a couple of southern tracking systems. And if they stay a little bit farther to the south, some of the northern fringes will produce some snow, maybe back into the foothills of uh, upper, the northern foothills of North Carolina, back into the mountains in, of Virginia and West Virginia, and then parts of interior sections of Pennsylvania into the uh, interior sections of the Northeast. If uh, everything came together just right, maybe we could see one of those systems track a little bit farther to the east, but still a little bit early for that yet. So we'll watch it and see. I'll keep you posted on it. Still a long way out for conjecture, but uh, look for the storm track to be predominantly such that much of the northern portion of the country begins to uh, see a snowpack build up and that would be good for later because it helps that arctic air keep cold as it moves into the south if you're a big snow fan in the east and the south that's what we want to see snowpack across the north to keep those air masses cold so they can deliver cold air in time with uh, time it up with moisture and that's the show for today folks hope you all have a wonderful day and i'll be back again with soon with another video uh, in the meantime have a happy thanksgiving to you and your family. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Share it with friends and family and let me know if you have anything you want me to pray over. I'll put it, put it in the comments section. I'm happy to do that. Any questions or thoughts you have too, let me know what weather you're seeing where you are. Let me know where you are. Anyway, take care everybody. Have a, have a happy Thanksgiving.